Oh, hey, Nordanglia. I was looking for clues about the water cycle, but found some of your questions instead. Let's go ask Professor Umenhofer. Hello, students of Nordanglia. I'm excited to hear all your questions and see all the exciting new things that you're learning. Hey, Nordanglia. I'm Abby Haley, your curiosity correspondent. Okay, let's dive into your questions. First, meet Priya from Oak Ridge International School in Mohali. She is really curious, just like Dr. Umenhofer. Hello, Ms. Umenhofer. I have a special question for you. My question is, how do these disasters happen? What is going on in the ocean? Thank you. Thanks, Priya. That's a really great question. The ocean is a big reservoir of water. All the water on Earth is essentially contained in the oceans. It provides a lot of heat and energy to the atmosphere. And so the ocean can play a really big role in steering a weather system. Tropical cyclones or hurricanes draw their energy from the ocean and all the rainfall, heavy rainfall, floods that um, are affecting people on land, all that water ultimately comes from the ocean. Ahmed from Compass International School in Doha is wondering, why is there hardly any rain in Qatar? Thanks, Ahmed, for the question. That's a really good one. The distribution of where on Earth rain falls depends a lot on the weather systems and the wind systems. Professor Umenhofer's lab actually makes these really cool simulations. They predict how changing temperatures and wind patterns around the Indian Ocean affect rainfall. While in the tropics, you have rising motion because these are areas that are heated by the sun. That air flows out from the tropical areas to the subtropics. The subtropical areas are actually very dry, where you have mostly air that is sinking down. And air that is sinking down can actually take up more moisture and no rainfall happens. And so Qatar lies in one of those uh, subtropical dry belts and therefore very little rain can form. Emma from the British International School Beijing, San Li Tun, has a question. She wants to know, how does a blizzard relate to the ocean, even if it's salt water? Blizzards and any uh, water that falls on land doesn't contain salty water. Uh, that's a really great observation because actually salt doesn't evaporate from the ocean. So water that evaporates from the ocean typically leaves salt behind. And so by the time that uh, moisture actually makes it into a blizzard, um, all the salt will have been left behind in the ocean. And it's only the water particles that are being transported from the ocean onto uh, land. I think it's, it's super cool. Actually, that is, uh, that is what this picture back here is actually uh, trying to uh, convey. Hong Zhu is a digital artist. She was fascinated by exactly this. This is her representation of the water cycle. So these little white things that you see in there are the salt crystals that are being left behind. Hey, Nordanglia. Great detective work. You all had such thoughtful questions. And I bet Professor Umenhofer would agree. Thanks, students of uh, North Anglia. You're doing great and you've been exploring lots of um, exciting uh, topics and your questions are excellent. I'm glad to hear that uh, you're thinking about this so carefully and uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the challenge.